So, in the last lecture we talked about two different kind of latches the SR latch and the D latch. We also considered the variation of the latch with an enable input. So, we continue with our discussion today in the second part of this lecture on latches and flip flops. So, we shall be talking about clocks the notion of a clock and how we can modify our design of the latch to make it a flip flop which can be operated by a clock. Now, let us try to understand why we need this kind of a clock and what is a clock. See a latch I mentioned if you recall in our last lecture it is level triggered. For example, in an SR latch whenever you apply S R 0 1 or 1 0 and apply enable equal to 1 the output will be set to 0 or 1 accordingly. Similarly, for a D latch. So, whenever the inputs are changing the output is changing immediately after the gate delays of course. But for a flip flop we talk about something called an event outputs do not change immediately when the inputs are changing. We have the notion of time that is something called a clock whenever there is a clock signal only then the outputs are supposed to change in response to whatever we have applied in the inputs. So, clock gives some kind of synchronous kind of operation for a sequential circuit. It tells you well inputs I can change anytime I want, but when the outputs are going to change that will be determined by the clock. Okay. So, let us see formally what a clock is. A clock is a periodic rectangular pulse train just like what is shown here in this diagram below. It is a repetitive pulse train the signal goes up and down up and down well it depends of course, on what kind of logic system you are having this low level can be your 0 volts the high level can be 3 volts 1 volts 5 volts it can be anything. So, it can be it will just two levels of voltage and you see whenever there is a clock signal coming like this there are two events one event is when the clock is going from low to high and the other event is when it is going from high to low. So, I can say that my circuit will be triggered by some edge of the clock I call it clock triggered. So, I can say it is triggered by the leading edge or the positive edge or the falling edge or the negative edge of the clock positive edge triggered negative edge triggered. Well, in contrast in latches I mentioned earlier these are triggered by voltage levels and such clock concept is not there in a latch. Okay. Fine. So, with this background we shall be trying to explain what so called edge triggered flip flops are. You see flip flop is nothing but an extension of the latches same kind of logic applies say for an SR latch depending on the SR values the output will be set to 0 or 1. For a SR flip flop for example, same concept is there you apply some SR values but the output will change only when there is an active clock signal that is coming only when there is a clock the output will be set to 0 or 1 right. So, an edge triggered flip flop basically it changes its state in synchronism with a clock signal or a clock pulse. So, we have already said how a clock signal looks like. Now, a clock signal is characterized by the time during which it is high this is called the on period. The period it is low it is called the off period and the total sum of the on period and off period this is called the time period. So, the clock going up down here and again going up this total time duration is called the time period. And if T denotes the time period, then the reciprocal of it 1 by f 
is the frequency or the, or, or the other way around. If f is the frequency, then 1 by f will be the time period. So, I can say if my t is for example, if my this time is 1 milliseconds, then my frequency will be 1 by t which is 1 kilohertz. So, in 1 second there will be 1000 times up down up down this kind of things that will happen. And we use clocks to synchronize operations in a sequential circuit and this synchronization can happen either at the positive edges of the clock which are these when the clock is going from 0 to 1 or at the negative edges of the clock which means here when the clock is going from 1 to 0. right? So, when you design a circuit all output changes will occur in synchronism with this clock edge positive edge or negative edge. Okay? Let us now look at a H triggered SR flip flop. Now, you already know what an SR latch is. Let me try to explain what is shown in this slide. First is the symbolic notation in a diagram how you show an SR H triggered flip flop. You see in an SR latch you have S and R Q Q bar outputs. Here in addition you have another input called clock and this is how you show a clock just by a this angular symbol here. Now, if we show it like this, this indicates positive edge trigger that whenever the clock is going from 0 to 1, the output will change during that time. But if we use a small circle or a bubble here like is shown here, a small bubble before this triangle, this indicates negative edge triggered where the output will change whenever the clock is going from high to low. So, just in a circuit diagram whenever you show a flip flop, you either show this bubble or do not show this bubble, this will indicate whether it is positive edge triggered or negative edge triggered. Right? Okay. Let us assume that we have a positive edge triggered SR flip flop. So, what will be the state table like? You see here instead of enable we have used a signal called clock. What does this table says? It says the clock can be either 0 or 1 but no leading edge or positive edge. So, it can be either continuously 0 or continuously 1 no problem there will be no change in the output. The outputs will change only when there is a positive going transition in the clock that means, clock is going from 0 to 1 only during that time the circuit operation will take place and the output will be changed. So, for a latch we had the enable signal whenever enable is high the latch was open here whenever the clock edge is coming only exactly at that point the output will be evaluated. Okay, this is the idea. So, whenever there is an edge well the rest is exactly like an SR latch that same behavior 0 0 means no connection 0 1 means uh, no change. 0 1 means output is 0, 1 0 means output is 1, 1 1 is invalid. Now, from this behavior we can write down the characteristic equation of an SR flip flop means what is the output expression. Now, see for a flip flop there is a notion of a clock, clocks are coming 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can count how many clocks are coming. So, we use this notation the value of the output q at time t plus 1. Q t plus 1 indicate what will be the value of the output when t plus 1th clock pulse has come just after t th clock pulse. 
the characteristic equation says two things first it says r and s must be 0 which is an indirect way of saying both r and s can never be 1 because if r and s are 1 their and will be also be 1 it says its and must be 0 and second one is it also tells what the next q will be in terms of the present states. So, you see you can draw a Carnot map and you can derive this expression how I have come, come to it. You see in a Carnot map, so on this side I am showing the SRR and this S and R inputs and on this side I am showing the output at time t that means in the previous state what the output was. Well, why I need this you see if my S R input is 0 0 there is supposed to be no change if it is 0 0. So, if the previous output was 0 it will remain as 0 if the previous output is 1 it will remain as 1, but if my input S R is 0 1 then the output is definitely 0 it is definitely 0 and if it is 1 0 it is definitely 1 definitely 1, but because 1 1 is not a valid input we can mark it as a do not care right. So, we have the Carnot map. So, in this Carnot map you see I can make one cube like this this will be one large cube and one cube like this this will cover all the ones this large cube is nothing but s and this q will be q t here and in this case it will be r bar r bar q t. So, r bar q t or s this will be the expression for the output when the clock comes it will be evaluated according to this expression right. Okay. Now, another thing we define for a flip flop it is something called an excitation table. Now, excitation table means we can set a flip flop to 0, we can set a flip flop to 1. Not only that we also want to see that how we can change the output of a flip flop from 0 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 0 or 1 to 1 all possible 4 combinations. This is shown by something called an excitation table. This excitation table says that when the circuit output changes from all possible 4 combinations 0 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 0, 1 to 1, what is the required SR values I have to apply. Say the output was 0, I want to change it to 0 that means no change. So, I can either apply 0 0 or I can apply 0 1. So, I am writing 0 do not care. So, if I want to change from 0 to 1 there is only one way I have to set s equal to 1 or equal to 0. Similarly, from 1 to 0 I have to set s equal to 0 or equal to 1 and it is 1 it remains at 1 then I can either apply 1 0 or 0, 0, 0 means no change that means do not care 0, do not care 0. This is the excitation table of the SR flip flop right for any flip flop we can design and write down such an excitation table. Now, let us look at a simple timing diagram for an SR flip flop I am just showing suppose I have a sorry let us go back. Yeah. Suppose I have a clock signal, let us say I have a clock, let us consider there are 4 such pulses coming clock signal and the flip flop is um, positive H triggered, I am assuming it is positive H triggered, it is triggered on this edge, it is triggered on this edge. Okay. Now, let us assume some values on S and R. Suppose my S value is like this and I am also showing the value of Q. 
suppose my initially my s value was 0, s value was 0 and r value was 1, r value was 1. So, when the first clock edge comes here, it says that s is 0 r equal to 1. So, the value of q will be 0. Well, earlier q can be anything, I do not know what q was earlier. So, I am showing it like this, I do not know what q was, but after the clock edge comes because s is 0 r equal to 1, q will be 0 definitely. Now, suppose this s remains as 0 and r also becomes 0. So, both of them are 0 0 here when the next clock comes. Now, 0 0 means no change. So, output q was 0 this will remain as 0. So, some, some means even after this it will remain as 0. Now, let us say this s is becoming 1 here and r is remaining 0. So, now s is 1 r is 0. So, at the third clock this output will be becoming 1 because s 1 r 0 and let us say this s is again becoming 0 here and r remains 0. So, 0 0 is no change. So, this will again remain at 1. So, a simple example I am showing this is just a timing diagram that with respect to SR flip flop as the input changes and as the clock edges comes well how the things go on changing. Right? Okay. Now, let us talk about the H triggered version of a D flip flop, it is exactly similar to an SR flip flop. First the symbolic notation exactly same, so I can show it either positive H triggered like this, negative H triggered like this, there is a single input D. The state table also will look like this if the clock there is no leading edge positive is triggered, no change. If there is a clock edge, so whatever is there in D that same value gets copied to the output. So, here you do not have to do any calculation, characteristic equation is very simple, q t plus 1 is nothing but whatever has been applied to D at that point in time. Okay. So, whenever the clock edge comes at that point in time whatever the value of d was that will go to the output. So, you see just I am telling you one thing suppose this is your clock and your d input was 1 and your q was 0. So, whenever the clock comes then only q will become 1. q will not become 1 means immediately as soon as you make d 1 not like that, it will wait for the clock to come only then this change will occur. Okay. All right. So, in a similar way we can construct the excitation table for the d flip flop. Say for d flip flop if you want to change from 0 to 0. I have to apply 0 in the d input that 0 will go in, 0 to 1 I have to apply 1, 1 to 0 I have to apply 0, 1 to 1 I have to apply 1. Same means, whatever I want to change to I have to apply that same value in d irrespective of what it was earlier, right? the same thing I have to apply. Okay. Now, let us talk about another kind of a flip flop called J k flip flop. J k is the most versatile of the flip flop, versatile means it is more powerful than the other kind of flip flop. You can implement some functions which the other flip flops may not be able to do it directly. Let us see what it looks like and how it works. First thing is that there are two inputs j and k just like SR flip flop. There is a clock here I am showing only the positive edge version, negative edge will be similar there will be a bubble here okay. that will be negative edge triggered. Now, let us see how 
a JK flip flop looks like. Now, in the state table you see we have shown it in a slightly different way. Instead of just writing q and q bar, we have written q t plus 1 and q t plus 1 bar, because we need to keep track of the time. Here as per our notation q t will indicate the value of the output at tth time unit that means, after the tth clock pulse has come and q t plus 1 will be the output after t plus 1 th clock pulse has come that means, it keeps track of the time. So, I am saying what will be the value of q t plus 1 and q t plus 1 prime depending on it the previous state what q t was q t was the previous history. So, if there is no edge it will remain at q t and q t bar no change and when there is an edge 0 0 means no change again q t and q t bar 0 1 exactly like an SR flip flop 1 0. So, far it is exactly like an SR flip flop <laughs> the only change is the last row. For an SR flip flop the 1 1 combination was supposed to be invalid, but for a JK flip flop we are not saying it is invalid. If JK is 1 1 the output value will be complemented that means, 1 will become 0, 0 will become 1 that is the difference. So, when the inputs are 1 1 q t plus 1 will be same as q t bar q t plus 1 bar will be same as q t that means, it will be the not of the previous state this is the only change. This is why we say that j k is the most versatile and the most general kind of flip flop because it is s r flip flop plus this additional functionality which s r flip flop does not has. Talking about the characteristic equation you see again. So, here we are again showing j k and q t if j k is 0 0 no change that means, if it is 0 it will remain 0 if it is 1 it will remain 1 0 1 means it will be 0 set to 0 1 0 means it will be set to 1 and 1 1 means not if the output was 0 it will become 1 if the output is 1 it will become 0. So, if you want to minimize this Carnot map the cubes will be 1 will be this other q will be this. So, if you just write down the minimized expression this will be the characteristic equation j q t bar k bar q t this will correspond to the second term this one j q t bar is this 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 cube and the other cube is k bar q t. And regarding excitation table suppose we want to go from 0 to 0 for a j k flip flop you can apply either 0 0 or 0 1 just like an SR flip flop. So, it will be 0 do not care 0 do not care uh, if you want to go from 1 to 1 this is also like an SR flip flop you apply either 0 0 or 1 0 that means, do not care 0 do not care 0, but the differences are here if you want to go from 0 to 1 then you either apply 1 0 which will make it definitely 1 or you apply 1 1 which will complement the output output was 0 it will change it. So, it is 1 do not care 1 do not care and 1 to 0 will also be different 1 to 0 you either apply 0 1 or you complement 1 1 do not care 1. So, these are the excitation values for j k flip flop. Now, let us look at the gate level implementations of a j k flip flop. Here I am just showing this diagram where we have referred to as here is clock, but we have not shown any edge detection circuit so far we shall discuss it later, 
but assume that somehow some edge detection mechanism is there. So, whenever clock edge comes then only here some one comes. Now, just let us see how it works. Let us say that I have applied j 1 and k 1 and here also it is clock works like an enable this also is 1 and let us say the output this q was 0 and q bar was 1. You see there is a feedback from q bar there is a feedback to here. So, q bar was 1, so this input is 1, q is 0, there is a feedback, this is 0. So, 1 and 1 and 1, this NAND output will be 0 and 1 1 0, this will be 1. So, this cross coupled not get, this 0 will make this 1 and this 1 1 will make this 0. So, you see whatever it was, it gets complemented, j 1 k 1 should complement it. So, I leave it as excess for you to verify that for the other combinations this j k flip flop state table also gets satisfied. Okay. This is the gate level implementation. Now, there is another kind of a flip flop which you can say is a special case of a j k flip flop. This is called a toggle or a t flip flop. So, a T flip flop has a single input T as this diagram shows there is a single input T this, this is the positive edge version negative edge version. And what this T flip flop says if T is 0 there will be no change if T is 1 the output will toggle toggle means it will be it will get complemented not no set reset kind of thing only toggle. So, this is equivalent to that j equal to 1 k equal to 1 combination of a j k flip flop the output will toggle just that. So, you see the state table. So, whenever there is a clock active edge you see if t is 0 no change if t is 1 there is a toggle q t plus 1 becomes q t bar q t plus 1 bar becomes q t and characteristic equation you can read like this you can write straight away like this because you see anything x or see if t is 0, 0 x or q t is this q t itself same and if t is 1, 1 x or something is not. So, you are getting not okay. this is the characteristic equation of a t flip t type flip flop. And talking about the excitation table, uh, whenever you want to go from 0 to 0, there is no change, no toggle. So, t is 0. 0 to 1, there is a toggle, there is a change, you just set t equal to 1. 1 to 0, toggle, set t equal to 1. 1 to 1, no change, set t equal to 0. So, whenever there is a change you set t equal to 1, when there is no change you set t equal to 0. And just as I said t is a special case of a g k flip flop, if you simply tie j and k together and you call it t, you can implement a t flip flop. Because if you apply t equal to 0, this is equivalent to j 0 k 0 which means no change, if you apply t equal to 1 which means j 1 k 1 which means toggle output that is what t flip flop is right. So, with this uh, we come to the end of this lecture. Now, in the next lecture we shall be looking at some other aspects of flip flop design and, and in particular we did not mention one thing that how this edge triggering is implemented. We have said that the flip flop will work whenever the edge of the clock comes, but there must be some circuit which is detecting the edge and activating the flip flop during that time right. So, we shall be seeing that in the next lecture. Thank you.